Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Recent investments by government in the Forensic Science Laboratory show results. St. Lucia is crowned the world's leading honeymoon destination for the 11th time. The Department of Health and Wellness to facilitate research in controlling mosquito-borne diseases. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. The Forensic Service Laboratory is moving forward on a sound footing as government provides funding for upgrades to its physical structure, human and technical resources. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney visited the facility to see the improvements firsthand. The government of St. Lucia is committed to reducing serious crime by 45% by 2020. It is part of its medium-term development plan, which gives focus to citizen safety and security. Investigation and prosecution are also part of that plan, where the forensic laboratory plays a critical role. Government recently injected close to three-quarters of a million dollars to do repair works at the facility. The Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney, recently toured the facility. Fernanda Henry is the Director of Forensic Science Services at the lab. We had a very impromptu tour with the Prime Minister this morning and I wanted to really um, express to him um, well, our thanks for the injection of $700,000 for the infrastructural repairs to the building. We had had cracks in the building. We were suffering from pool, pools of water accumulating in different spaces, then which eventually led to the growth of mold. We had to close down the facility for several months due to um, uh, an invasion of mold. Um, so I really wanted to show him the work that had been done because the work that was done was good work. Um, we were able to move back into the building. We were able to get the, the moisture levels down. We're still battling some humidity issues, but I think that that's inherent to the building that we need to um, address. But I wanted to, to show him the facility as well as the equipment and, and have him meet the staff. Once the lab is fully functional, it will be conducting forensic drug chemistry testing with an expanded scope. DNA testing, trace examinations, firearm analysis, and digital forensics. The lab will also absorb the crime scene units of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Henry says that to do this, the lab must be accredited. A team of people will come from an external body, a body that accredits labs. A team of them will come. They will look at our documents. They will look at our case files. What case work have you done? Have you done it well? Are you consistent? Are you doing the same thing all the time? Do you do what you say you do? So you have a policy in place. Are you really following your policy as you say? So our documents will demonstrate that. They will also have one-on-one -on -one interviews. They will also have an opportunity to see people in lab. So they will see, well, okay, is that person really following the procedure as they should? So after that, then they will sit together with us and tell us what their findings are. If they, if they find um, that we in some areas we are not doing things the way we say, or we may need to um, we may need to improve in certain areas, they will inform us. They then give us a time frame to do that. If we have anything to improve, we have about eight weeks or so to make those changes. Government will save tremendous costs once the lab becomes fully operational. St. Lucia has secured an 11th win at the World Travel Awards as the world's leading honeymoon destination. The announcement was made Friday as the St. Lucia Tourism Authority unveiled a new marketing campaign more from Janelle Norville. And the award for world's leading honeymoon destination goes to the Helen of the West, St. Lucia. St. Lucia has been adjudged winner of the prestigious title of world's leading honeymoon destination, a highly coveted industry accolade for a record 11th time. The announcement was made on November 28th at the 26th annual gala ceremony of the World Travel Awards in Oman. St. Lucia won amidst a crowded group of renowned honeymoon hotspots the world over. Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated that once again St. Lucia secured its position as a world-leading destination in the area of romance. The minister noted that in addition to St. Lucia's beauty, the ambience of the resorts, what makes it stand out are the hospitality workers to whom he dedicated the award. A small country like ours, getting to be called the best in something in the world, it is pretty, pretty big. And so for me, I want to congratulate all of the tourism employees in St. Lucia. I want to salute them. 
And I want to, again, um, I want to, again, dedicate this award to their hard work, their sterling contributions. Just in my way, I saw a very stark example of that. I was walking through, and as I reached the pool, there was a housekeeper waving um, in the most hospitable manner. I wouldn't recognize that, you know, here is a guest, uh, whether not resident or resident, and she made it her business to ensure that, you know, I saw her and that she was hospitable to me. And I think that that kind of attitude, that kind of spirit, is why we have won that award. Managing Director Sanders Resort St. Lucia Winston Anderson congratulated all entities and stakeholders who made this award possible. Sandals, too, secured a number of awards, including World Leading All Inclusive Resort for 24 years and World Leading Family All Inclusive Resort for 22 years. St. Lucia is an island with endless possibilities, a place where the greatest love stories unfold, where romance, weddings, and honeymoons continue to be a major niche market for the country. A market, according to Anderson, on which Sandals Resorts will be capitalizing fully. I can tell you that St. Lucia was one of the places at the heart of a recently launched Isle to Isle wedding promotion, which enjoyed and continues to enjoy heavy global marketing, a taste of what you're experiencing today. And so naturally, we're very, very proud to partner with the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. Destinations wedding are a major attraction for guests from all over the world. And therefore, I am sure that St. Lucia can expect a windfall from receiving this award again. Other three properties here in St. Lucia, we alone host over a thousand weddings every year. So you can just imagine when you add all the other properties um, who I know host the number of weddings, how many weddings we had. But let's expand it a little more to say, by us again winning this award, what the opportunities lies ahead for Destination St. Lucia. In celebration of the record win, the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, SLTA, has launched an interactive social media competition that will see one lucky person winning a five-night stay for two at a leading hotel on the island. Interested persons need to watch the SLTA's Instagram stories for the next 11 days and answer correctly 11 engaging questions about St. Lucia. The winner will be randomly selected on December 10, 2019 and must follow at Travel St. Lucia to qualify. General Manager of Cap Mizor, Ross Stevenson, echoed Anderson's sentiments. Fantastic opportunity we have in marketing this award and pushing St. Lucia even further and better. Uh, Cap Mizor was very fortunate in 2010 to be the home of The Bachelor, and that again really focused the attention of the world on St. Lucia as a romance and honeymoon destination. Um, it's, it's up to each and every one of us to keep on demanding more creating more, and to really push all aspects of tourism in St. Lucia. In addition to winning the highly coveted award, St. Lucia was also nominated in three other categories, namely World's Leading Island Destination, World's Leading Wedding Destination, and World's Most Romantic Destination 2019. The World Travel Awards is voted for by travel and tourism professionals and consumers worldwide. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Come January 2020, holders of a St. Lucia driver's license will be able to apply online for a renewal. More on this report from Julita Peter. The contract signing for the implementation of the Digital Government Services Platform took place on November 23, 2019, between the Government of St. Lucia and a consulting firm Crimson Logic, an e-government solutions provider that offers trade facilitation, e-judiciary, and e-citizen services. The Digital Government Services Platform will make it easier for citizens and visitors to digitally access government services. The new platform will automate 154 services across 13 agencies over a three-year period. The establishment of this digital government services platform is a direct response to the gaps identified in the delivery of timely, efficient, and transparent 
Government to Citizen and Government to Business Services offered by the Government of St. Lucia. Through this project, we will transform the way agencies work collaboratively to engage and interact with businesses and citizens. We will also work to create and or update all relevant legal, regulatory, and governance frameworks necessary to support this transformation. Phase one of the project will focus heavily on transforming the transportation department and the services provided through this agency. Because can you imagine prior to 2006 or 2008 when we opened the licensing office in Viewfort, somebody from, let's say, Labry or Oji would have to take a bus, come to Viewfort take a bus from Viewford because these people would not drive up to pay their license. Then drive up, take a bus to Castries, from Castries to Union, just to pay a driver's license. And when they get there and they pay the driver's license, they would tell them at that time, come in a month for your driver's license. And sometimes they come at the end of the month and the license is still not ready. You see the time, the cost, so that is what needs to change. Some of the features of the platform would include online application for renewal of driver's license, in addition to e-payments for renewals and alerts and notification on the status of the application process via WhatsApp and email platforms. This is expected to significantly curb the long queues and inordinate delays experienced at the transport division. From the Department of the Public Service Communications Unit, Julita Peter reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness is expected to begin facilitating research aimed at controlling mosquito-borne diseases in St. Lucia. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. Efforts to strengthen surveillance of vector-borne diseases to ensure safer St. Lucia is in progress as the Division of Environmental Health recently opened its first ever mosquito insectary at the Union Orchid Garden. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says, the establishment of the Mosquito Insectary demonstrates the Department of Health and Wellness commitment to reduce mosquito breeding and vector-borne diseases. With the establishment of this insectuary in a box, the Department of Health is hoping to strengthen its mosquito surveillance system through the establishment of a database of the mosquito species on island as well as mapping out their location and using geographic information systems. This will enable the department to do the following. Targets its interventions at the right locations in order to reduce mosquito-borne diseases. Assess risk of vector-borne disease outbreaks. Perform routine tests for insecticide resistance of both adult mosquitoes and larvae. The Mosquito Insectary was made possible through the financial support of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. PAHO Country Program Specialist for St. Lucia, Tessa Stroud, says her organization remains committed to working with the Department of Health and Wellness to protect St. Lucians from vector borne diseases. PAHO has provided support to St. Lucia over the years in strengthening the capacity of vector control programs through the provision of training. This insectary in a box is, crucial, is a crucial part of the infrastructure necessary to achieve the objectives. With further strengthening of St. Lucia's capacity to undertake surveillance, prevention and control activities towards preventing outbreaks of vector control, vector borne diseases in the future. Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanen says, the mosquito insectary is an effective tool as it will assist in the development of strategies in vector control management. And hence the reason why a lab is so important uh, to us, uh, because now we would be able to collect mosquito eggs throughout the length and breadth of St. Lucia, be able to analyze these eggs uh, and determine specifically what species of mosquitoes uh, that we have uh, in our country. This is critical because in order for us to respond to mosquito-borne diseases, we need to understand uh, what mosquito species that are transmitting the disease. The new mosquito insectary will allow officers within the vector control unit to collect data on the species of mosquitoes 
and also with determining the best insecticides for killing the mosquitoes. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fernand Neptune. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Welcome once again to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The 2019 Winlot Winnet Islands Under-15 Cricket Tournament, set for next month, will now be played in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Initially, the tournament was scheduled to be held in Dominica, but multiple factors have forced the Dominica Cricket Association to inform the Winnet Islands Cricket Board of Control of their inability to host the tournament as planned. The tournament is usually hosted annually based on a rotation across the Winnet Islands following receipt of an email from the Dominica Cricket Association which cited the upcoming general elections and unavailability of the national stadium as the main factors for the suggested relocation. The leadership of the Winnet Islands Cricket Board of Control made the decision to solicit the cooperation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to host the tournament. The Vincentians have since confirmed their commitment to host the tournament and are making preparations to receive the competing teams. St. Lucia defends their title and the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be making a formal announcement of the squad on Tuesday. Also in line for execution by the Ministry's staff next week, will be the staging of the school's road races on the Bosage circuit. December 4th is the date set for the inter-district primary road race competition north and December 5th will be the turn of the secondary tertiary school's road race. 10 a.m. start for both events. Eight districts will compete in the primary school's inter-district and among secondary tertiary maximum participation is expected from the 15 competing schools. And with that, we end our update from Youth Development and Sports this weekend. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. As part of efforts to educate students about diabetes, the Department of Health and Wellness is visiting schools to bring awareness of healthy lifestyle and well-being. More in this report from Fennel Neptune. Students and teachers were granted the opportunity to receive valuable information about diabetes, physical activity, healthy eating and lifestyle as the Department of Health and Wellness hosted health activities at the schools. Family Life Educator General Alexander Dupre says it is important that students learn about diabetes at an early age so that they will be empowered and feel confident in caring for themselves. As we know, we have many persons uh, becoming diabetic and even ones at a younger age. Before it used to be where older persons would get the diabetes, but now we are having younger and younger persons developing the condition. And the only way that this can change is if they know what nutrition is all about, what diabetes is all about, and what sugar does to the body. Soccer fit instructor Mikel Laporte says it is extremely important that students engage with physical fitness to ensure they are healthy. It was important with Soccer Fit or for Soccer Fit to partner with the Ministry of Health just to be able to get that 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 sort of mentality into people there to get them to physically move which is what I do I, I provide the sessions and to get especially for the kids especially for the children to get accustomed to the idea of movement to get them used to moving and that that, that can be a part of their lives not something extra that you have to add and that you can have fun so you get into the movement you get used to it it's healthy for you it's part of your lifestyle and something you can enjoy doing so hopefully they can carry that into their their, their more formative years. Nutrition officer Shalan Edward applauded the initiative and says it is necessary that they are proactive in ensuring that students eat healthy. 
This activity is important because right now what we realize is that for me, when I get the clients get to my office, it's not too late, but it's too far gone. So if we start now and educate them and show them what they can do to prevent diabetes, that is better than we starting in the end. So this activity in teaching them how to exercise, how to eat properly. Today we spoke about the different types of sugars. Um, we spoke about portions, we spoke about moderation, we spoke about the different foods they need to cut down on and those they need to increase. Um, these are the important things that helps them prevent these chronic conditions that are linked to our daily lifestyle. The health activity offered services such as exercise sessions, nutrition exhibits and face painting for students, and blood sugar testing for adults. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funa Neptune. Every year, St. Lucia joins the rest of the world in commemorating World AIDS Day on December 1st. In an effort to raise awareness in the communities to help fight HIV-AIDS, the Infectious Disease Unit at the Department of Health and Wellness will be hosting a health fair on Saturday, November 30, 2019 at the Cooley Town Daycare Center from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Residents of Cooley Town, Jackmel, Roseau, Vanna, Lacroix, Mango, and other surrounding communities are encouraged to take advantage of this activity. The health fair will offer services such as blood pressure and blood sugar screening, nutrition counseling, rapid HIV and syphilis counseling and testing, education and counseling on healthy living and sexually transmitted infections, and information on how and where to access clinical services. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Si ou ni maladi HIV e ben maladi sexual. Si ou pa protege kòw la ou kanye sex ek plizyan moun, sa ka y mete la vi ou ak gwo danje. Ou ka ekspoze tout pat na ou prezan ek an tan ki ka vini ek maladi ya. Sevi yo kondom chak fwa ou kanye sex. Chanje ki, i e potan pou dekouve maladi ya bonè. Ou sa viv ak bon soti, menm si ou ni maladi HIV. Pwen responsabilite, proteje kòw e bi li zot. Examine kòw. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Department, qui est responsable pour les formations au gouvernement sur le site GIS, à ce moment-là, la télévision nationale, puis à NTN, à cause de Nouvelle à Creole, à cause de Primus Hutchinson. Le gouvernement de cette lycée a continué à l'effort pour encourager cette lycée et à l'autre pays pour aider à procurer des informations concernant les plans pour bâtir un cette lycée nouveau. Pour ce moment-là, le bureau qui est responsable des affaires de cette lycée à l'autre pays a continué l'initiative de cette samedi le 23 novembre pour te bienvenir les sept lycéens qui ont été dans le pays et pour plus toujours informer concernant le développement et l'investissement et de voir l'État qui peut être available et qui peut passer pour le pays. Un ensemble de cela est pour être en maison de ville qui est construite côté les sept lycéens qui habitent l'autre pays et aussi les gens qui ont été pour retourner au pays. Aussi, tenir les représentatifs Hord Slaspa, Invest Saint-Douche, SSDF et Banque de Développement de cette lycée. Le directeur des affaires et implémentation du gouvernement de cette lycée, Mme Nancy Charles, qui était en charge, Informer ce monde qui était présent que le gouvernement a une discussion récemment et puis cette lycée au Liban là t'es là et bien récemment tenu un meeting et puis cette lycée en Londres et New York ministre là qui était à Chebe position le premier ministre du moment là c'est on va Guy Joseph parler à ce côté gouvernement concernant sa administration a accompli et plan qui gouvernement ni pour développement développer cette lycée concerné projet et programme. Selon Honorable Gaël Joseph, la raison est tout là à présent qui a participé, c'est parce que vous comprenez ce qui mérite pour faire pour l'année plus d'appréciation pour payer cette lycée. Il continue pour parler de divers sa gouvernement j'ai accompli et pour faire payer à Koyonasi, mais pour conduire l'investissement, pour vivre et aussi pour travailler. Honorable Joseph mentionne la discussion pour baisser la um, décision pour baisser la taxe. Vat. Soulagement et au bail pour les gens qui ont été doués en l'eau pour l'hôpital Victoria. Et ajoutez que tout ça et plusieurs autres aidés pour baisser la uh, dette de cette lycée. Ambassade pour le bureau de la Dr. Joyce Lynn Fletcher, expliquez que le bureau est toujours pareil, qu'on responsabilité 
pour supporter et toutes ces façons et pour essayer d'assister cette ici qui l'autre pays pour adresser ça qui a concerné yo. Community Center en Blanche Amico en chemin pour recevoir bonne assistance tout de suite. Ça c'est parce que plan pour vivre bâtir établissement ça là complète. Travail ça là en bas projet pour réduction faiblesse des as des VRP. Community Center Blanche est bâti en l'année 1998 mais trouvé abandonné parce qu'il a eu des problèmes de ménagement et la situation est encore plus mauvaise après le cyclone Thomas à l'année 2010. Comme la population de jeunesse a augmenté, les résidents ont fait un appel pour le gouvernement vu et bâti le centre en neuf pour créer un centre pour le développement de ressources qui a existé en commun. Le centre Blanchard a bâti pour résister au mauvais temps et qui a aussi une facilité pour entretenir de l'eau. C'est de l'appli à parmi plusieurs autres services. Là aussi, il y a des services computer, une chambre de conférence, une chambre de bureau, une chambre pour musique, cuisine, une petite chambre pour préparer, vendre et aussi pour manger, place pour chaîne diverses activités, un stage, balcon à parmi d'autres. Monsieur qui prépare le plan pour l'établissement de ça, Lest Arnold dit qu'il facilite ça à Blanche Amico, qui est plus sustainable et qui est plus facile pour les gens qui déshabillent. Jodia, nous avons tué un finissement, conversation représentative pour Gozile, on a bien admis tout, concernant le développement en ces communes qui a représenté. On a bien tout, a fait un appel pour le gouvernement considérer ces quantités de projets qui nécessaire à ces communes qui a représenté et qui a espoir qui bégé l'année prochaine, qui a embrassé presque tout, si pas tout ça qui est possible. So, Anya Chai plan pour Gozile, nous avons travaillé sur le monde de Scotland en Guanavie. Nous avons regardé pour que nous ayons les lumières sur ces côtes-là. Mon chien, j'ai un mais nous avons mangé, parce que nous avons vu quand on a passé, nous avons regardé. Fil mon chien, nous avons mis les lumières en l'air. Fil le maroussi, nous avons essayé de mettre les lumières en l'air. Toutes ces bagages-là, nous avons avoué, nous avons fait entre à présent et avec 2021. Ok, M. le ministre, dans les dimanches, tu peux avoir une nouvelle pour pour constituer une soupe particulièrement. Eh bien, moi, vous l'avez dit, les gens constituent ainsi nous, constituent ainsi moi, côté qui, nous n'y avons pas constitué ainsi, nous n'y avons pas un constitué ainsi qui a fait une grande contribution pour le développement de cette ici, pour l'économie de cette ici. Mais nous parlons de tout ça, nous besoin. Nous travaillons à un plan pour le développement, pour continuer le développement pour le Gozile. Moi, je travaille et puis j'en place là pour voir qui ça fait mon commande pour tolérance yo mon commande pour patience yo mon commande pour assistance yo et coopération yo pour faire assurer qui ça fait parce que même là ou qu'a fait dans ces bagages là qui porter développement ça qui porter petit jeune mandé là par exemple chemin de là c'est à dans ces chemins nous nous faire en concrète ça veut dire on des jours quand nous pas moto car à distance et marcher nous avons besoin de coopération, c'est mon Pas de drive en l'air, là où ça va, il ne peut pas parler. Bagaille comme ça. Nous mettons des bagailles en place, qu'on en PAC, qu'on en ICT Center, qui nous avons déjà fait en constituante, avec nous détruit. Ça, c'est encore cher. Il a pour service et assistance, même et citoyen comme nous. Pour Adam, ces citoyens, trouver le pouvoir en yé mais pour faire, pas pour détruire ces bagailles là moi quoi ça c'est sans quoi faire et ça sans bagarre fait moins beaucoup la peine mais nous quand mettez bagarre en place parce que il y a fait un dans pas causer les deux fois nous quand mettez bagarre en place quand nous quand mettez ici des caméras des caméras pour si il fait encore nous quand ils savent qui monte qui fait et quoi moi premièrement si nous savons qui monte qui fait nous quand fait mon appel c'est moi quand mandé pour assistance coopération et comprendre j'ai un constituant si moi et moi voulais faire aussi avec qui même si vous ne pouvez pas attendre battre l'estomac tout le même si vous ne pouvez pas attendre de bavarder toute la longue journée, je travaille dans le terreau, je travaille pour gagner une constituante avec le développement et le propre constituante. Avec M. Mesdames, ça c'est tout à ce programme aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie un peu pour vous écouter. Je vous invite encore pour jouer depuis moi encore. Je vous remercie pour vous Nouvelle à Koyot. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon fin de semaine et que ça soit là pour moi, vieux présenteur Michel. Merci, Opel Primus.
And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers mainly over the Windward Islands. A tropical wave in the vicinity of the Windward Islands will bring cloudiness and some showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The seas slide with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 6.11 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.